So this is a this is a picture of a California condor, and there are um, it's it's flying towards you a little bit. So you're seeing on the top edge of the wing here a little bit of an, an angle here up. If you're straight underneath it, looking up, that would be more of a straight line. But but we're kind of have a little bit of a view of the back, um, and this is a rather symmetrical view. So what I want to do is. I want to look on the wing here, and you see how the wing comes up, and right about here, it's getting narrower, 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 and then there's this little scoop. What you're seeing is these are um, these feathers right in here are covert feathers. They cover up the front leading edge of the wing, and um, these feathers here are above the secondary feathers. And out here, these ones here, starting here. And going boop, 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 and then getting to this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fingers out here. Those are primary feathers. So the primary feathers actually go all the way back to about here. So those are primary feathers. The first several are fingered, and the rest of them come back here. The primary feathers um, are, are a fan. So primary feathers fan out like this. You can see that fan rather clearly out here, but actually all the way through here, those feathers are fanning. So the fan starts here, just that these ones are broader and they overlap, but they're also taking that same fan. These ones here, the secondary feathers are coming kind of straight down. And if we take any of these feathers and we follow it back, it's connecting in here. This one I'm going to follow it back. It's connecting in here. This one follow it back. It's connecting in here. The primary feathers are all connecting to the bird's hand, which is right out here. And so I'm going to have a fan of feathers. I'm going to have kind of a, 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 a then a, a zone of where the primary feathers are, they're, they're still fanned, but you see them kind of as a straight edge along with the secondaries here. The secondaries are going to come straight down. I'm now going to jump over to my document camera, and I am going to look at how, um, how I go about transferring that image to a, here we go. Transferring that image to the, a, a piece of, 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 of paper here. Now let me turn the screen if I can. Nope. Nope. It, nope. Ah, let's try this. Ah, that worked. Okay, here we go. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just by lightly blocking in this image. And... Um, then, <clears throat> then we will, uh, we'll, we'll look at kind of what we might do from there. Actually, Amelia's already way ahead of us here. She's, while we've been talking, she's been, uh, drawing up a storm. Well done, my dear. Well done. So let's kind of unpack what's going on in her drawing here a little bit. Um, so when I'm drawing a bird in flight, my general approach is often to kind of make a T drawing. So just a little line that shows me where the body is and a line that kind of I've got a leading edge of a wing coming in here. And I, I'm uh, yeah. sorry. Hey. Hi, I'm Jen. Oh, um, let's uh, see if we can mute everybody. Yes, I got it. Okay, great. Um, and then um, I have another wing that is kind of coming out at it. So all I'm initially doing is, is kind of going, here's an angle for my body, here's an angle for this wing, here's an angle for this wing. All right. From there, I'm going to give my body a little bit of thickness. So I'm going to put in a little box in here that is going to make my body, my body thicker. All right. From there, what I'm going to do is block in that this wing here is going to be roughly this thick. This one out here is going to be roughly this thick. Okay. 
the first part of that wing is going to be a lot of secondary feathers. And then there's going to be a zone of primary feathers sort of originating up here and fanning out. And I'm going to be thinking of a fan that is going to go kind of in a an, an arc in here and an, an, an arc in here. So that's sort of where that I'm thinking of um, my, my, my feather is going to start off maybe a little bit shorter, kind of get longer, but that's sort of where the tips of my feathers are going to, to be coming in. You see, there's no detail in this at all. That what I'm doing is just giving myself some guidelines to be able to generally block in what is, what's, what's happening with my friend, the bird. Um, now it needs a tail. For getting in the tail, what I find is that the negative shapes on either side of the tail right in here are some of the most useful, most helpful angles that I can get. So in this zone here, what I do is I look at the shape of the air as something that kind of comes down and has an angle in here. This one has, comes down and has an angle like that. If I am looking at the tail and draw the tail, I always make my tail the wrong shape. But if I can get this negative shape here and this negative shape here, then I will end up getting a tail shape that is going to work for my bird. Right? So then the bottom of that tail is going to be coming across here. And um, this bird has a head that will be roughly in here. I'm just kind of blocking in some pieces and it'll have some feet that are going to dangle. Right. Now let's take a look, a little, I'm going to jump back to the wings here and see what I can do to kind of flesh those out. On my secondaries, the part that of the wing that is the thickest is about two thirds of the way out here. So the bottom edge of this, I want it to kind of come out to there about two thirds of the way down here. I want this to kind of come out here and back there. So I've just, that's to kind of get the thickness of this. It's not even, I'm looking at where is it the thickest and getting that point in there. Now for the feathers right in here, so the birds, <clears throat> if you had x-ray vision and today you do, uh, the bird has an elbow in here, it has a wrist out here and it has a hand out in there. And so the, from the hand here, that's where all of these primary feathers are going to be fanning out. So essentially I have from this hand zone in here, I have a feather that is coming out this direction. I want to think, bring it from here out to my kind of guideline, from here out to my guideline, essentially drawing in the shafts of some of these feathers. And let's see, I wanted, were there seven of those? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. So moving down the hand, six, And my seventh will be in there. So I've just got some lines that are radiating out here, fanning out from my hand. I'm doing the same thing in here. So from this zone here, that's where I want my, my, my feathers to be roughly coming from. Once I've got a framework like this, 
I can take a regular pencil and go over this and start to really draw my condor. So in drawing my condor here, I'm going to just sort of start by coming along. The leading edge of the wing here is really straight. And then I'm going up into my first feather. I'm now coming out into feather number two and making those just very skinny. And as I am coming down, I'm actually seeing a little bit more thickness in these feathers in the photograph reference that I'm looking at. So I'm making that one a little bit thicker. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, So you see how all these, I want them pointing back into the hand here. And the last one is sort of a big triangle. And then the primary feathers from there come along this edge. And I'm just putting it in a little kind of dip in here. There's a few places where the feathers aren't totally even. So instead of drawing a smooth line, line along here, I'm just going to kind of come down and sort of every once in a while kind of give you a little bit of a, a, a hint that you're kind of, you know, that there's, that there's just sort of feathers of slightly different lengths in there. So that wing was constructed from some pretty simple principles. I was initially kind of just what is the width, uh, what, what is the angle of the wing? I then got the width, the, the length of these different parts, the primaries, the secondaries, made arcs around the edges. Once you're kind of in this state, it's looking a lot more like a um, kind of a, a, a bird wing. The inner part here, these feathers right here in the armpit are called axillary feathers. There's my little bird armpit. And from there, I'm just gonna have these lines in here have a little bit of roughness to them, suggesting that there's kind of rough feathers. On the underside of a, of a condor, you're not typically going to be seeing you know, individual feather, 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 feather. So you don't need to worry about like, is this feather then overlapping this one here? You're not seeing that at condor viewing distance. But that is a wing with, um, I think, some good condor proportions in it. Um, in just shading this in, my, the tip of my pencil, I'm using a, a 0.7 millimeter mechanical pencil here. And I don't know if you can see this on your screen, but my tip is kind of chiseled. I have a little bit of a chiseled tip. And that's because I've just been drawing with it. And that, with this big, blunt, chiseled tip, I can very quickly add an area of tone in here because each stroke covers a lot of territory. There's an eraser, honey. All right, so there we go. Maybe darken that in. Oh, there's a little condor wing. Um, so for the, the head of this condor, it has its head kind of hunkered down. Um, and I'm just going to kind of put in a little kind of beak shape to head. Um, <clears throat> The upper part of its back is catching some sunlight. So I'm gonna leave that part a little bit lighter. Um, big condor belly coming in here and a beautiful little red patch of skin visible in the center of the chest there. Um, in drawing in the legs, what I'm going to do is I want to think of what is the shape first between these legs. This is 
a really great strategy for getting your, your, your legs in the right position. If you start with it, the sort of the space between the legs, here's this, this foot kind of dangling down here. It's gonna have this other foot here dangling. If I just draw this leg and then draw this other leg, what I, at least for me, what I invariably get is good legs, but they're the wrong distance apart. But here, I just like I looked at the negative space here by the tail, I look at the negative space between the legs, and it guarantees that my legs are going to be spaced a reasonable distance apart. There's covering space again very, very quickly with this blunt pencil. You see how that blunt, dark pencil covers a ton of territory very smoothly. You can still see a little bit of the kind of the angle of direction of my hand in it, but um, look at how much territory I cover so quickly. Now I've got that sort of zone of tone in there. And that's because that Pencil has a blunt, a blunt tip. So that's why I, I love often sketching, not with a very sharp pencil, but with a kind of broad mechanical pencil like this 0.7 millimeter one. Now here's this other wing that's gonna go out here. It's gonna have first a leading edge here that is flat. I love having already figured out where these feathers go. So now I can just focus a little bit on kind of what is its shape going to be. And that makes this whole process a lot easier and a lot faster. This one here, I'm gonna come out, has a little bit of a down, wider. This one here, same thing, wider. And finally, this last one just points out, comes in, and from here, the rest of my primary feathers, these are all primary feathers in here, but these last ones aren't fingered, just the outer ones are fingered. All right, now we're gonna do the same thing with this lower edge here. Instead of just drawing a line like that, I'm going to suggest that there are some feathers of different lengths. Just that little bit of irregularity does a lot to say, you know, these are just some shaggy feathers coming in. So here are those axillary feathers that are gonna be in here. Um, the armpit, axillary, the armpit feathers right in there. And then we go out into a thin line that comes out. There's an arc across where the primaries are and then into those, those secondary feathers. Broad pencil again, very, very quickly adds tone. Remember once um, I was in Marin County working at an outdoor education school up there, it was April Fool's Day. And um, I was drawing turkey vultures and I, I, I drew into my sketchbook um, a, a condor flying around with the turkey vultures and uh, just sort of left it in my field notes. I created these field notes around it as if there had actually been a turkey vulture circling around there. And then uh, on the bottom of the page where it says date, uh, April 1st, and I wrote, gotcha. I wonder, I hope that that doesn't confuse somebody who's making species lists years from now into thinking that there actually was a condor flying around there at that point. It was kind of fun to have a little bit of goofiness in my, um, let's see, it's not nice, These, the, the, the blunt pencil, just like you want, you want a big broad area of dark, you can get that just so smoothly, so easily. You can't do that with a sharp pencil. Um, so the under wings here, there's gonna be actually some sh shadow and shade in there. I think I might want to just slightly tone these guys back so that they're in shadow.
then there is there's my little vulture, not a vulture friend, condor friend. Um, if I am working with watercolor, I can also add watercolor on top of this guy. Um, if you're doing stuff in the field, you're going to find that a, um, where did I put my watercolor? Did you have one handy? Have what? A water brush handy? Yeah. Here. I can borrow yours. That would be really helpful. Thanks, hon. I'll pass this one over to you. Um, <clears throat> the, um, here's another drawing tip. Um, have daughters uh, nearby who have um, uh, are good at kind of keeping their, their gear together. So here's a charged up, ready to go water brush. Thank you very much, Amelia. I appreciate that. Um, the uh, I'm gonna, if you're drawing in the field, you're gonna find that if you're drawing with soft pencil like this, um, that it smudges really easy. And especially if you're working in a journal that has a spiral binding, this page, as it kind of goes in your journal, it's gonna be, the pages are just gonna be rubbing around ever so slightly. And what you're going to see is that your journal pages you, you start off with a crisp drawing, and within a month or two of carrying it, your journal around in your backpack, this drawing is going to have this gray halo around it. And the things that were pristine white before are now really, really toned back, and you'll be frustrated by it. You'll be like, oh, geez. Um, so um, what, something that works great for that is you bring it home, and you can hit it with some spray fixative if you're using soft pencil. That will prevent the pencil lines from smearing as much. The other thing that works really well is watercolor on top of your, your drawing. Watercolor actually works as a little bit of a fixative. And so I'm going to put some watercolor on this character and use that to prevent it from being quite as smudgy a drawing. So up here in the head, I'm going to drop in a little bit of orange in there. I'm gonna get a little bit of purple and put it down below that head. Um, I'm gonna get a little bit of a blush of uh, that sort of dark purple there in the middle of the chest. I'm putting in some of my lighter colors first. That's way too yellowy yellow. That's yeah, better. All right, so I've got a few kind of colors in those spaces. Now I am going to put some watercolor on top of this body. And I am going to mix up a combination of a little bit of brown. So this brown is uh, Daniel Smith's Bloodstone Genuine with a little bit of dark blue, this endathrone blue. And they will make together a very nice dark, dark color. Um, let's keep staring. Oh, uh, Carolyn has been working on hers. Here's um, her uh, condor here. Um, and saying, keep staring, keep staring, keep staring. <laughs> hey, I like it, huh? Thanks for sharing that. Um, uh, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start here under the core of this body, um, here on this wing, and I am sort of, sort of brushing out, out here. I can go blah, 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 blah. When I get to the edges, kind of moving a little bit more slowly trying to kind of keep some of those angles in here. But look at this, on the edge here, I'm kind of coming along with the tip of this brush. And so being careful tickling the edge of that. And then in the kind of the, the body part of it, it can go much more slowly here. I am dragging the water brush, not pushing it. Notice that the, my hand's moving in this direction and my brush is pointing back this way. If I have my brush 
going forward like that, what it does is as the brush goes along, the tip is going to wiggle in weird ways. But if I drag the tip of the brush, it's much more controlled. So I can come out there and just come out to the tip and then lift my brush tip off. So I'm pressing harder in here to get slightly thicker and then it comes off. That kind of rich dark in there is again in Dathron blue and Bloodstone Jingler. And now I'm going to add a little bit of other colors in there, a little bit of Windsor Violet, sort of a purple color. Um, nobody will really be able to pick up these big differences in the color, but you know, it, sometimes you'll get, just kind of get a little bit of a hint of different dark values shining back at you. So careful along the edge of the leg here. So I draw with the tip of my brush along the edge of that and then can be fast in here. And off in this wing, dragging, dragging the tip of the brush again. I drag the brush instead of pushing it. And this will really prevent this drawing from being really smudgy in my journal. The other way, again, of getting around that is to have a little bit of um, some spray fixative at home. Now I've got this back of my condor here. I'm going to have that be lighter going into darker back here. So there's just a kind of that's a little bit of light catching the, the back here. And those parts underneath the wing. Um, what color do I want in there? Test this off on the side. Yeah, that'll work. Just a little bit of uh, blue gray. That little wash is going to help it not be as smudgy. Finally, last thing, I can kind of just add some really dark accents. I'm going to go in and get some Bloodstone Genuine and a little bit more in Dathrone Blue. So there's some dark paint on the tip of my, my brush here. And I'm going to bring those in here a little bit, in here, sort of defining some of the parts of this. And maybe part of the wings that are close to the body here. Let's 
So this is a wonderful, wonderful endangered scavenger that we have out here in California. The principles which I've used to, uh, to draw this, you can apply to drawing virtually any bird in flight. Um, one last little thing I might want to do is just this bird here uh, on the, the white of the paper um, feels a little bit, um, a little bit isolated out there, a little bit kind of out of place. There's no kind of context for it. Um, and I'm going to add a little bit of sky background. One way of doing this, if I plan ahead, is if I put in that sky first, then I don't have to worry about, um, if I put in the sky first, then I don't have to worry about the sort of smearing the, the condor. That's a, probably a good strategy. Here I didn't do that, so you'll see me just have to be careful as I kind of go around it. I'm going to crisp up a few of these wings. No, I'm going to do that. Yes, yeah, so I will. Um, just could put a little bit of dark paint here into this wing tip, this wing tip. Hey, Jack, we don't see the bottom. Uh, Thank you. And also we got a question about um, six as opposed to seven wings there, or feathers on that left-hand wing. Uh, that is uh, Jack math. <laughs> Um, so uh, yeah, the photograph I have has seven in it. Um, I uh, just was not counting very well um, as I was uh, drawing. And so that's, that's right. So um, uh, it, it, should have, it should have another one. But uh, hey, this guy just molted one out. All right, and I'm gonna just darken up a few of the wingtips on the far side as well. Okay. Uh, just to crisp these up a little bit. And there are seven on that side. All right, I'm gonna just put a little bit of sky with this. When you have watercolor down, once the watercolor dries, it's gonna be much, it'll tend to kind of migrate out and smudge other things much, much, much less. However, um, there still could be a little bit of that action going on. So just as I put in some uh, cloud background here, I am going to be mindful of that and just be careful when I am kissing the edge of the condor with the, the edge of my brush. I'm going to get some sky color here. Um, I'm going to get some ultramarine blue, a little bit of cobalt blue. And mix those up. I like to make a little dab off on the side of the page just to see what color I have and that will that'll work for me. And what I'm going to do is just put in um, a little bit of kind of cloud blue sky business here and just have the edges of that sort of trail off that you know this is this is saying that you know hey there is some 
there is some sort of sky thing going on here. And deliberately, I have white behind the wingtip um, because I don't want to have to get in there and, 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 and smear that out. Jack, while you're um, filling in the sky, we got a question from Ray Bonto about the coverts, the, I guess, feathers. And he was asking oh, yeah. where they are. Oh, hey, Ray, good to, good to talk to you. Um, glad you're with us today, my friend. Um, the, um, <clears throat> oh, just, just sort of one note with this, with this chisel-shaped brush. Note when I kind of come in here, I'm taking the edge of it and just tilting it along. I can really kind of carve along the edges of something like this. Um, uh, so, but to answer Ray's question, um, uh, the coverts, the un, there are coverts on the top part of the wing and on the bottom part of the wing. And um, in, in this bird here, my, um, my, the coverts, you've got the, these axillary feathers here. There's a bunch of other coverts. You've got some of the coverts that are white, but part of the underwing coverts are black in here. So if you actually were to see all those, those feathers, thank you. Um, so on the um, kind of underside here, this, the axillary feathers in here and that stripe going out, those are covert feathers, but there's actually also some covert feathers underneath those that are black. So um, those would be, th those are kind of in here in that zone. So I just think kind of this bird having a little bit of an ensciment um, makes it a, a, a happier, a happier condor. Um, and uh, there it, there it is. Um, that, that's some condor. Um, but, uh, so again, for, for Ray, we have armpit or axillary feathers in here. The white you see is part of the covert feathers. There are gonna be other covert feathers down in this zone here that are, are black. And then the primaries fit underneath that, the secondaries fit underneath those. That's an excellent question, an, an, an excellent question. I like to hear, I, like, I see that you are thinking about the different zones of feathers. And here on this under view, you're also trying to figure out how it, how it ties into those, those, those zones. So the fact that you're asking that question really shows me that you are thinking about the, the anatomy of this in a way that's really gonna help your drawing. So that, I give a thumbs up. Um, let's see here. Um, the, I am going to, um, the other folks were, just to kind of, um, I'm going to jump back to the, how do I stop the share screen? Oh, I know what I do. I, uh, nope, nope, not that. Um, there we go. All right. Um, so, so, so check this out, folks. Um, the, the, the watercolor, it's a fixative. That's, your drawing's not gonna be as, as smudgy. The, the, the pale um, dull pencil is great for covering a lot of area really fast and also pushing your values. With my mechanical pencils, what I do is I you typically use a 0.5 and a 0.7 millimeter mechanical pencil. My, my secret weapon, is that I fill it with 2D lead, the silver bullet of the um, mechanical pencil world. You put that 2B lead in it, and you're gonna be able to get much darker darks when you're popping in those, those shadows. But the 2B lead will smear more than 
than, than others. So just be, be aware of that. Watercolor helps as a fixative. The mouse pad, as you're using it on your Microsoft Word, let's say. That wasn't me. Um, the last thing that I wanted to address, there was one question that popped up about the idea of, um, of my definition for love. And I wanted to explain part of that um, for, for, for folks. Um, the sort of my working definition of love is the act of sustained compassionate attention. Sustained compassionate attention. You think about, you know, in terms of, you know, you're hanging out with your, your, your daughters. And when you connect and give, when you give attention, they are, they are seen, they are, they're, 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 they're present. Where you get the disconnect is when you're like, you know, like, I'm busy, I'm busy, like, you know, and you cannot, you cannot give them attention. Attention is, is love. So my definition used to be sustained attention was love. Um, and then somebody pointed out to me that if you have an interrogator at Guantanamo Bay, that person is giving you sustained attention, but I don't think we can call that love, right? Um, so that's why I added compassionate attention, sustained compassionate attention. So with the intent of, 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 of helping and aiding and, um, and, and, and connecting with the other. So that's true for our attention with our children, with our partners, and with nature. When you give your sustained compassionate attention to a flower or the structure of a condor's wing, you start to see these levels of, of beauty and wonder in things that you otherwise would not have seen. That attention changes you. It opens your heart to a deeper connection with whatever it is. Um, the spider in the garage or the, the, the moss around the edge of the bricks. When you give it attention, it transforms. The, the, your attention transforms your relationship to whatever it is that you're looking at. And the more that we can pay attention, the more we're actually able to love. And so your homework today is um, between now and the next time we meet, what I'd like you to do is with your journal um, to go out and explore whatever, whatever catches your attention. It, it, it can be anything. It can be bird, moss, bug, um, track in the mud, uh, dried seed pod, um, cucumber turning funky in the refrigerator, um, bean pod from Costco. Whatever it is, um, get, uh, get some object. And, but as you are exploring it in your journal, just be aware of, of, of your personal relationship with whatever it is. And see if by the time that you are done with, that, with your intense attention, if perhaps your relationship with whatever that is has changed ever so slightly. Um, and just be conscious of that. Be aware of how the act of attention makes us, um, helps us fall more deeply in love with the world. See if that act of attention binds you with place, with a, an object, with a person, with an organism around you in a way that you might not otherwise have let your heart be open to it. And I think, I think that you, you'll find that that brings your nature journaling to a deeper level. Each, each page of your nature journal can be a, um, a song of love and gratitude to the world. And thank you for joining us today.